WPPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Pioneer Pure Vision Plasma Displays. The purest color, the purest experience. And Wendy's Home Style Chicken Strips. It's better here. Humphrey. 
Humphrey. Everett the tight end, Roscoe Paris and Lance Leggett, the outstanding freshman out of Arlington, Texas, at the wide receivers. Joel, uh, Joel Rodriguez there in the middle. He uh, is the bell cow, I would say. Derek Morse is a new base, hasn't played that much. And Chris Myers, who grades out uh, more consistently than anyone else on the line, is uh, the starter at right tackle. Second down and six, play action. Berlin gets the pass off quickly, got it to his tight end, Everett, and Everett is going to be knocked out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line, and let's check the defensive starters for Clemson. Bennett and Fountain, two of the leaders on the defense at defensive end. Coleman and Tate are the tackles. The linebackers, it all starts with the man in the middle there, Leroy Hill out of Paddock, Georgia, number 43. And in the secondary for Clemson, this is the way they'll start. Ty Hill, decent on cover. Justin Miller on the other side, along with Fudge and Pew. Fudge going for a record. Three interceptions in three straight games for him. From the 24, straight ahead with the running play, and it's Frank Gore this time. He's not going to go for very much yardage. As Clemson jumps up defensively, Charles Bennett, one of the first men to get there to him. Ron, it's important that Miami's playing at home. Huh? The crowd's with them. They're coming off that upset. The national title hopes look dim, so you'd expect them to be a little flat, but they're at home in this crowd. It's a good thing they are playing here. Mike, here's another combination that they like. Hill comes into the lineup. Quadrant Hill, number 23. He's a fullback, but he also is a tailback, and they can get mismatches as far as cover with him. But this time they use him as a blocker. Gets his block at the 10, at the 5. Gore will walk in and a very quick opening series touchdown for the Miami Hurricane. 23 yards in the scoring play. of how the Hurricanes are going to play tonight. I hope that the Clemson Tigers brought their A game because they made that look extremely easy. The extra point is perfect. We'll take a timeout. And very quickly, the Miami Hurricanes, on this run by Gore of 23 yards, jump on top 7-0. Miami 7 to nothing. Leggett, the freshman out of Texas with the key block, Mike. Leggett and against man coverage is going to crack back here, and then all of a sudden Ty Hill gets caught inside, and uh, Hill, the fullback, hits an easy block on him. Frank Gore in the end zone. A good call versus that defense. And you got man coverage, and you're running with the crack back. Ty Hill couldn't get outside leverage. Justin Miller, now we get a chance to see him. An average of almost 34 yards per return. He's got three returns for a touchdown. Two on kickoff returns, one on punt return. Brian Monroe, the left footer, comes forward and sends this one high, but not deep, and it's going to be returnable. Here's Miller from the three. Breaks by one man and in very good coverage at the 20-yard line. And that means that Charlie Whitehurst will come on to run the offense for the Clemson Tigers. Mike, he's had a good year, but not a great year. 60% last year, only 50% this year. A lot of that, I think, has to do with new faces on the offensive line because of injury. You're right. New receivers, new offensive line. He thinks he has to carry the football team. Seven touchdown passes, 13 interceptions. One setback, and that's Reggie Merriweather, number 37, who has an average of just over five yards per try. He scored four touchdowns, but he'll get the handoff. Tries the left side of the line, nothing. He was stoned, maybe a loss of one, as Tavares Gooden is there to make the tackle. Here's the remainder of the offense. Merriweather, Steven Jackson, the fullback. Ben Hall, the tight end. Bayham, one of the wide receivers, along with Aries Curry. And up front with the offensive line, Barry Richardson could have gone to high school for another year, wanted to come on out, and is playing. He's a starter at the left tackle. Tommy Sharp, one of the leaders, the offensive center, number 53. Second down, about 10 and a half. Whitehurst looking, looking, and tries to throw it away. And a grounding flag has been thrown as Orion Harris comes in to
to make the sack on him. Now, let me ask you something. What's, I guess he was not sacked before he got the pass away then, so. Orrin Harris with a good charge in the defensive line. Charlie Whitehurst should have taken the sack. Ron Cherry with the accurate call. And Mike, let me tell you something. Orion Harris only had one half sack for the entire season. And he's one of the guys that defensive coordinator Randy Shannon has kind of called out to say, hey, you've got to play hard. They've called them all out this, <laughs> this week. You're going to see effort out of this defense. Third down and 17 following the penalty. Clemson's got to take it all the way out to the 30-yard line. And you see the Hurricanes creeping up very, very close, and then they back off. The safeties now drop deep. And he'll go with the running play. Merriweather, 15 at the 20, and he'll take it to the 22, tackled by Thomas Carroll. Good call because you got third and long yardage. You don't want to turn the ball over and, and get in the route right here. Tommy Bowden knows he's got an enthusiastic up team in Miami. He's just got to stay with them right now, take their best punch, and then play. So here we go now with the punt game. Chasing, and we got Hester back deep. Now, one of the things I was told just prior to the ball game, don't be surprised if Cole Chasen does soccer style kicking in other words take the snap move to his right and then get the kick away he did not on that one and it's a driving spiral returnable from the 31. <laughs> Esther stepped out of bounds I believe they're going to say just before he reached the 35 yard line Aaron Andrews down on the sideline what do you got for us well, Ron, the last time Clemson was here in the Orange Bowl, January 1st, 1982, they won the national championship. They beat Nebraska. Now, head coach Tommy Bowden says he's not going to use that to, for his team to pump them up for this game. He said some of them weren't even born back then. But what he did tell his team is how far that Clemson team went. They were undefeated that year. They beat Nebraska. They proved a lot of people wrong that year. And he says that's what he's telling his team heading into the Orange Bowl tonight. Ron? Okay, well, they got their hands full. Uh, it's, as the old saying goes, uh, they get more than they can say grace over right now with the attitude of this Miami Hurricane team. They came out firing on all cylinders. Brock Berlander, who operates best from the shotgun, will take the snap at the 29, going to go vertical, going to go on top, and the ball is knocked away on a nice defensive play by number eight, that's Ty Hill, who was one of the sprinters on the champion ACC sprint team from the Clemson Tigers. The man coverage on the outside, Ty Hill runs right with the wide receiver, Moss. Pretty good coverage, it was. almost got a pickoff. It was uh, very good coverage. And the interesting thing about uh, Ty Hill, boy, you could see the second gear that he put it into, and it just moved right on up there with Sonoris Moss. He was not going to be outrun by any means. Second down and 10 from the 34. Running play, they give it to Gore, breaks through the tackle, has five, has 10, counted off at 11 yards on the run. Tremaine Billy, who was an undersized middle linebacker playing because of an injury, made the stop. Game plans for Miami on offense. Gore, Moss, and Hester, 35-plus touches. Run the football. Big plays from Brock Berlin. He's already delivered. Defense set the tone with a big play early. They did that. Cover the crossing route. The crossing routes have been a problem for Miami's secondary. So they operate with a first and 10, Mike. They have it at their own 44-yard line. Quadrant Hill comes in at fullback, number 23. And they'll fake it to Gore, sets deep in the pocket, look at the protection, gets the ball off, has it complete, that's Moss, and they'll tackle him after only a short gain. Quick coverage by Tremaine Billy, that uh, linebacker, you could see him getting there in a hurry. You're right, uh, the protection, you don't get anybody close to Brock Berlin, too long to cover the crossing route of Moss. You know, these, these corners for Clemson, Mike, can really run. Good. But your point is well taken. You can't give anybody that kind of time because you can't cover forever. A lot of field. Berlin now 3 of 4 for 46 yards. For the 49-yard line, second down. Pitch goes to Gore. Open side of the field. They hit him up for a moment. He got away from the first pack 
Lincoln is going to almost have the first down at the 47-yard line. That is an outstanding second effort by Frank Gore, the junior, out of Coral Gables, Florida. Trey Tate defensively. This is a defense for Clemson that Tommy Bowden said this week is really playing better, and they're kind of leading this football team. Now, they've been stunned here early, but you're right. Justin Miller, Ty Hill, very good corners. Leroy Hill, very good linebacker, good front four. Mike Tyrone Moss is coming to the ball game. We saw Frank Gore coming to the sideline. Because of the two knee injuries and surgeries that he's had, they try to use him at times when they think he is with full steam. And you see what Tyrone Moss can do as he wiggles his way at right guard and then takes it to the left, down to the 40-yard line. Ty Hill stopped him, but he has the first down, and just like that, after a quick breather, Gore comes back into the lineup. Larry Coker said he wanted to run the football tonight against Clemson, and he's setting that example early in this football game. Rashad Butler, the left tackle, a junior out of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, also with a paving block on the play. Gore now four carries, 37 yards, and the touchdown. Back into the lineup. Blitz is on, quick out pass, got it out on the flat, and that's complete to Buck Ortega. And Ortega, they will say, is pushed out of bounds just inside the 35. Ty Hill has been a busy guy so far. Yeah, good play calling by Larry Coker, Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator, because everything they're calling right now, they've really got Clemson's defense back on their heels. Six rushes, five pass plays. They got a good combination. You know, Larry is, is such a good guy, very upfront, and he just said, hey, we got to quit talking about it and just go do it. You got to go do it. Door back into the boundary, nothing doing, and a good pursuit from the backside as the tackle is made, and it's 99 Maurice found along with Trey Tate combining on the stop, and a change defensively for the Clemson Tigers as they will get the extra defensive backs into the ballgame. Trey Tate, you can see him. The coaches say one of the most improved of that defensive front. Third down, Miami needs the 30-yard line. Eighth play of the drive. They lead it 7-0. Brock Berlin in the shotgun. Retreats. Good protection again. Out in the flat, gets it complete, and that's not going to go for nearly enough yardage. As Parrish came up to make the hit, but Miller was right there. Great closing speed again by these defensive backs of Clemson. And one of the things that uh, Dan Werner talked about, the offensive coordinator, he said these defensive backs can run, every one of them. Well, they're, they're covered really well. Justin Miller's a very good defensive corner. Miami going to go for this. Clemson's got to watch for the signals that they don't jump offside here. Joel Rodriguez comes out of the football. Number 70, the junior out of right here in Miami. It's fourth down, and you see where the yellow line is, squarely on the 30-yard line. That's Roscoe Parrish in motion, and they throw it to Parrish. He gets a block on the outside, turns the corner, first down, and you can add about eight more yards on it. Ty Hill forced him out of bounds, but the beauty of that play right there is utilizing the college rule. The ball is thrown behind the line, so you can block down for Yes, Sonoris Moss, number 83, is going to have a real nice block on the outside right here, and that allows Roscoe Parrish to pick up the first down. Another very good play call. So the Hurricanes took the opening drive and marched it right down the field, and they are doing the same thing again as they have it at the 22-yard line. Ortega and Everett, two tight ends set for the Miami Hurricanes. Play action again, under pressure, and he's just going to throw this one away. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. What do you got for us, buddy? Well, Ron, Oklahoma State has won in Austin since 1944. Miller takes us down deep in the heart of Texas. We have Vernon Morenci of the Pope going in against the Longhorns in Oklahoma State on top 21-7 inside nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Okay, Reese, I'll tell you, that is... Uh... It, in a way, is not surprising. Oklahoma State, a very physical football team. People wondered if they left their emotions on that field back in Stillwater against OU last week. I think they've answered already. The 11th play of the drive here that started back at the 34-yard line. Berlin sets to throw all the time in the world, and this was thrown way too long. Sonoris Moss was the intended receiver. 
but he was well covered and the ball thrown too far. Good pressure by Maurice Fountain, number 99, not allowing Brock Berlin to stand up there and find the open receiver. Brock Berlin is playing lights out. We saw it against North Carolina State. He scored a lot of points against North Carolina. He's starting this football game with some big throws. Well, did you know, and as uh, Coach Coker said yesterday, offense has not really been the problem. The Achilles heel has been the defense. Third down and 10. They need to take it to the 12-yard line. And that pass middle screen is caught. And immediately the tackle is made. Darnell Jenkins, first time that we've seen him tonight. And he is a big play kid as they tried to get him loose on that uh, middle screen. And it'll be field goal trying time as John Petty comes on for the Hurricanes. John Petty out of Clearwater, Florida. First team all Big East last year. 35-yard attempt squarely in the middle of the field. Good pass, good hold, and a kick right down the middle. We'll take a timeout as the Hurricanes so far on offense have made it look easy. 6.07 left in this first quarter. 10 to nothing, Miami. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Bacardi Silver Limon Premium Malt Beverage. Flavor your night. And Saturn, people first. And we are back as you look at that uh, Clemson defense. And Mike, I, I, they're not really at fault. <laughs> I mean, they're going against a team that's dialing all the right numbers right now. And they're running the ball well. Brock Berlin's throwing it well. And their offense has had one series, didn't stay on the field. They need a series out of their offense. Well, look at that. 13 plays, 49 yards, 5.03 uh, off the clock. 13 plays, the longest of the season. And then Petty hits the 35-yard field goal. Monroe to kick it off. Miller, the deep man. And very returnable. This one from the 10-yard line. And this is Curry. Curry, 20, 25, and maybe to the 26-yard line. Mike, how about the game plan for the Clemson Tigers? Well, don't beat yourself with turnovers. They haven't yet. Test Miami's run defense. Everybody in the last four weeks has run the football. Don't give it up. Don't kick to Hester. They haven't done that. Keep fades and deep throws of Brock Berlin to a minimum. So the Tigers with their second offensive possession. Clemson with a three-game winning streak trying to keep it going. And they've dug themselves a little bit of a hold here on the road. Look at total yardage. Three for Clemson. 117 for the Hurricanes in the early going. Whitehurst deep in the pocket. Gets that one out complete. And that is Bayham. And he will have it very close to the first down as we check back with Reese Davis. Reese. And Ron Taco Bell takes us to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Stanford and Arizona State. Andrew Walter going up top for Terry Richardson. This one is significant because it's Walter's 77th career touchdown pass that ties John Elway's Pac-10 record. But still, John Elway's alma mater up by four on the Sun Devils. Well, that's some, some fancy company there. Congratulations to him. It was Curry in motion. They go with the running play to Merriweather. And Merriweather is maybe going to have one yard, and that's it. Orion Harris is uh, there to make the tackle. Mike, one of the things, as we take a look at the uh, Miami defense, what they have allowed, first four games, 26 points, 863. Look, look at the last three games. The last three games, people have run, teams have run on them. They've thrown the deep ball, the crossing routes, and Miami has not, has given up a lot of big plays. Well, I'll tell you what they have done. Uh, it's seven changes Randy Shannon has made in the defensive starters for that. Seven that they have moved around. So they're trying to get a lot of people's attention. Straight ahead, Merriweather has five. And counted off at about eight yards. He finally is stopped at the 44-yard line by Entrell Roll. Will you talk about the changes in the lineup defensively? This week also they hit. 
They were in the full pads a couple of days this week, and they actually hit scrimmage and uh, had contact. So this football team knows their challenge tonight by the coaching staff. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the 47. Whitehurst got a man open. Did he catch it? Good yes, catch. sir. What a great effort. Cleaning out for the ball, Aries Curry, the senior out of Columbia, South Carolina, and it's good for 22 yards, and for the first time tonight, the Clemson Tigers are across midfield. Aries Curry ran a corner route. He's got track speed. He's either considering the NFL or the Olympics. 100-meter NCAA East Regional Champion has great speed. Randy Shannon talked about people letting receivers go, and might that seem like a, a blown coverage right there? Uh, man to man, it? and uh, the corner out first just got too much speed for him. They keep it on the ground straight ahead, about three yards. Merriweather, and stopped by the middle of that front. 57, uh, Javon Naughton. One of the first men to get there. Javon is another guy that got called out this week as his defensive coordinator said, hey, this time last year, you had eight sacks. This year, you have none. What do you want to say about it? <laughs> well, I can't you say know, anything. You can't say anything. So, I mean, he's going to say it tonight. He's going to say, I'm going to speak tonight. They, uh, they have tried to push every button they know. Make that ball to Curry. And they want to throw back to him, and he got held up. And Whitehurst does a smart thing. He just threw it away. But as they tried to sneak him through after they faked the handoff, Mike, wouldn't the defender wouldn't let him through. I think Tommy Bowden's arguing that he got held. Well, I think as he did. Curry came through the uh, line of scrimmage. He got held and tackled. And the official saying, hey, I didn't see it. Argue with the back judge. Yeah, talk with the back judge. And that's the worst thing you can tell a coach. Dwayne Coleman checks into the lineup at tailback, replacing Merriweather. It is a third down and seven. The line to make is the Miami 24-yard line. Haynes lead at 10 to nothing. Tigers trying to build a threat. Whitehurst, great protection, throws the ball just a little too high, and he had him open. Kelvin Grant was the intended receiver. Let's see on the last play, Aries Curry, number one's going to come through and see what happens to him. He gets held right yeah, there. He sure number does. Number 98. That's uh, Atkins. Atkins. Baraka Atkins, who they have moved inside to tackle this week. He has been playing defensive end. Jad Dean with the 48-yard field goal attempt. It's a good pass. Far has marked plenty of distance on this one, and he's good from 48 yards. Dean, that was big. They needed the answer the scores. 10 to nothing lead. Now they got a little confidence. Now they took the big best shot of Miami there in this football game. So let's take a timeout. 2:52 left. Opening quarter. Kings 10 to three. So we are back. A, a partial answer by the Clemson Tigers as they get the field goal. And that, by the way, is a new record for him. 48 yards, his longest was 47. As you look at Devin Hester, one of the two deep men, he also was joined back there by Jenkins. There's a look at uh, Jad Dean. He will not, not touch the ball, Hester. Well, they, they pooched it. They kept it on the ground last time. Let's see if he does the same thing again. Yep, that's what he does. Soccer-style kick on the ground, picked up at the 20-yard line. 30, near sideline. Nobody didn't get contained as a flag comes from way downfield. But I'll tell you, that thing was going to be all the way out to the 48-yard line, Darnell Jenkins, but they're going to bring it back because what appears to be either a hold or a block in the back. Well, you get the kickoff team over in the sidelines, and you tell them, say, hey, Hester's not the only guy that can take it back, but you're still all right. Don't get the football to number Holding four. On the return team, number 50, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. So that erases uh, an advancement. It cost them about what, Mike? 28 yards here. Looks like they're going to be scrimmaging around the 24. Maybe not quite 28, but 24 yards. And uh, the Hurricanes have it. Actually, this is their worst start of the night. They'll go with the 
two-back set in the I formation. Tatum Humphrey, the fullback, and Frank Gore, the tailback. Gore, blocker in front. Humphrey tries to clear the way, but a nice job of containment of the crowd. Wanted a flag on a late hit out of bounds. They're not going to get one. And Reese Davis, no flags on you. What you got going there? I've got a cowboy size can of whooping being applied to Texas backside. Texas and Oklahoma State, Vince Young off the deflection, picked off by Padgett McGee. That would set up the Pokes, Donovan Woods, the freshman quarterback, going in for the touchdown. It's 28-7, and the Pokes are threatening to make it worse. Wow, looks like Texas forgot they're at home. <laughs> I forgot they're in uniform. Well, two interceptions by Young, I believe, I read last week, and now one already tonight. On top, Berlin. Wow, what a catch, Roscoe Parrish. I tell you, he's not a very big guy at 5'9", 171, but he went up very tall and pulled out a 23-yard reception. Jamal Fudge was right there to whack him down, but Roscoe with the catch. Take good another look at it. Good protection. Brock Berlin steps up in the pocket, finds Roscoe Parrish, a guy, the receiver that he said has stepped up, and he feels very comfortable throwing the football to Roscoe Parrish. Parrish now three catches for 34 yards. Play action. Going to go to the other side. Going on top. Got a man out there, and it is knocked away. Defensively, Ty Hill. And how many plays has Ty had tonight? You get man coverage on the outside against Miami. They're going to try it. Darnell Jenkins. Hill did a nice job on the stop and go move. He gets his right hand up there and deflects the football. Well, when you consider that uh, he, in the indoor, was the 60-meter champion, and the outdoor was the 100-meter champion in the ACC, those kind of credentials let you know that you're not going to run past him real quickly. He did a good job reading the route. Second down for the 49. They fake the reverse, and this play, the ball is loose. Gore, I'm not sure he ever got a hand on the ball, and it's been recovered by the Clemson Tigers. Travis Pugh, number 29, recovers the football. Leroy Hill with a good hit on Gore. Looks like Charles, Charles Bennett, Bennett stripped the football also. Yeah, Charles Bennett, number 86, is the man who knocked it away. And you know, I was told today by one of the coaches that of all the kids that really benefited from last year's bowl game, the extra workout time really helped him. And it's almost like the light came on in that Peach Bowl game last year. Dwayne Coleman continues to operate at tailback. Whitehurst going to go on top and throws underneath, and the ball is caught at the 30-yard line, and spinning around and going down is Bayham. Mike, let me ask you a question, as we're going to get a replay of this one right here. Whitehurst seems to be a tad high with his passes every time I see him this year. In years past, since he has been there, 6'5 and 6'4 were his receivers. His receivers are not that tall anymore. You think it's just a thing of being able to get that, that aim down a little bit? Yeah, I, I think under the pressure he's under on Miami's defense, just to get it to Bayham was good. But he's got some young receivers that catch the ball well. You're right about the receivers last year. They were outstanding. Now Whitehurst going to run it and slides down after a gain of only two. He thought it was open, and then it closed quickly as defensively Tavares Gooden was right there, number 52, and no sense in getting him, uh, him racked up. You see the turnovers for us. First seven games, six, and the last game against uh, NC State, six. You talked about Charles Bennett. We had that Peach Bowl game last year. He made his first sack against Casey Clawson in yeah. the first half of that game. Really came alive. Whitehurst rolls the pocket this time, still rolling, and is just going to throw it away. <laughs> The mascot, Sebastian. Nice catch. Could have caught it in his beak. When you roll out, like Charlie Whitehurst did on this play, the longer you run to the sideline, yeah. the more your receivers get covered. <laughs> so Sebastian uh, with a little 
Maybe not airs on the sideline. Third down. They need the 20-yard line of Miami. Whitehurst looks to the bench for the call. Now he'll come to the offensive line and get him set. There's Curry, the inside receiver. Whitehurst hit, and he's going to be sacked second time tonight that they've gotten to him. Baraka Atkins this time. Baraka Atkins was a defensive end two weeks ago when we had him against North Carolina State. They moved him inside to give a little bit more pass rush, and he comes through and makes a sack on Charlie Whitehurst. I'll tell you what, he beat Chip Myrick, and Myrick is uh, the young man who was a starter all of last year, has had mono, and they're just getting him back, and I was told he was going to play some tonight, but he was not up to it on that play right there, and Baraka just went right by. Here's the kick, driving spiral, and it appears this is going to go, yep, into the end zone, and they will scrimmage at the 20-yard line. And with that, the end of the opening quarter, and as we take a break, Miami 10 and the Clemson Tigers 3, 36 yards on that kick. So we are back 10 to 3 at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. And thank goodness the rain has stopped. It rained very heavy this afternoon. Like the field in great condition. I really haven't seen anybody slip, have you? Nobody slipped. Clemson has taken the first wave of Miami's punch and good, survived. Good way so to put far. it. And that, that first wave, as far as what Coach Gottfried is talking about, if you're just now joining us, the opening drive just went bam, 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 and they were in the end zone. And they took it down the field, but uh, Clemson stiffened, and they forced them to kick a field goal on the second attempt. Hester in the ball game. They get him the football, tries to reverse it, cuts back to the outside. It's Berlin with the block. And a nice job defensively. I'll tell you, they strung it out all over the field. Lionel Richardson finally forced him down. Ron, you're right. Lionel Richardson doesn't make this play. Hester might be still running. Number 46, Lionel Richardson's going to sit back here on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now he's taking on blocks. Look at Berlin. <laughs> Stays out there, makes the play on Hester. Well, the quarterback trying to help out his running back, but I have a feeling that the offensive folks might tell him, go a little easier. We need you throwing passes and handing the football off. Second down and two after all of that. Hester in motion. They fake the pass to him and then go out on top. They decoyed him, and the freshman was open just over Lance Leggett's hands. And you see Berlin. He realizes he had the opportunity, and he overthrew it. Everybody plays Hester. And when you send him in motion, all of a sudden now he's going to come in motion. You think it's the bubble screen. These guys are Leggett's taking off and running deep routes. And all of a sudden, you freeze on Hester. And then Leggett runs right by you. They just don't get him the football. Wide open. Brock Berlin knows he missed it. Yep, he really did. He'd like to have that one back. I'll tell you something. We are seeing some kind of speed on the outside tonight between the defensive backs at Clemson and the wide receivers at Miami. Moss hit behind the wow. line of scrimmage. Penetration by the Tigers. Leroy Hill, Ron. I'm telling you what. Now, he roared off the football field as a linebacker. You talk about a big-time play now. Well, he is the second leading tackler on this team. And as I have been told, he's a very quiet guy. He said other people, oh, they jive talk a little, and they and they, they get on their teammates. He said Leroy never says a word except with his, his shoulder pads and his headgear. Well, he's the leading tackler on this football team. He just roared up and took off all the blockers. Here's Monroe with the kick, the left footer, driving spiral. And a fair catch has been signaled for and made by Justin Miller. So we'll take a timeout. The score remains 10-3 Miami. Well, tonight's game track brought to you by Pioneer. First touchdown of the night, Gore. Look at Quadrant Hill in front with the block. 23 yards, and he walks it in. And then Dean with his personal best. 48-yard field goal to get the Tigers on the scoreboard. And as far as Brock Berlin is concerned, he is off to a very good start. Roscoe Parrish going high to grab in that catch right there. Back to live action, Whitehurst on top. Three of six, 50 yards, and add on to that one. Number one, Aries Curry is out there to beat the defensive back, and that was Greg Street, the scrimmage.
strong safety, and he beat him for 39 yards in the play. He bet, beat Devin Hester, too, who's pointing to uh, three to say, go over to the top and cover me. He ran right by Devin Hester. Harris Curry with a good route. Good throw by Whitehurst. See the numbers on Curry. 712 yards, 49 receptions. And a stack high right here. Plenty of time on the game clock. Clemson trying to get it in the end zone, leaving this thing up. Draw play, and that's Coleman, and he is going to be knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Did you lose your head on that play? Keep my head here on at all times, Ron. Stanford and Arizona State. Cardinal had to leave the entire first half. Andrew Walter is going to try to get one more before the break. And he does. Matt Miller. Hey, that's a pretty good way to set a new Pac-10 record for touchdown passes in his career. Number 78, Walter passing John Elway. 17-14 Sun Devils at the break. All righty, our situation, 10-3, Miami on top. And now the Clemson Tigers trying to come up with an answer for the 28-yard line. That movement left tackle. Barry Richardson then. Barry, as I said, could have gone across to the snap. Full start, 79 offense. That's a five-yard penalty. We're playing the down. Mike, he could have he could have gone for another year of high school, and it, he wanted to come on to college and play football. And he's a biology major, so it's asked, not like he came in looking for crip courses. No, I asked Michael O'Kane, did you know when you had Barry Richardson at the when you signed him? Did you? Did you expect him to start? He said no. He just come out of nowhere. Well, it's hard for him to come out of totally nowhere. He's 6'7", 350 <laughs> as a freshman. Nice spot. Yeah. <laughs> they set the screen back into the short side of the field. Coleman, and it's like he ran right back into the defenders. Whoa. When you screen Miami, Miami runs so well they can recover well, on good. a screen. Gooden and McCray were the two that reacted the quickest. And now for the Clemson Tigers, it's going to be third down. And with the loss of that play, they still, they got to take it down to the 18-yard line. Yusef Kelly, number five, comes in at tailback. Strong running back, Yusef Kelly. More of a McClendon type back. Pass thrown near sideline off the mark. Bayham, the intended receiver, down around the 15 yard line, but uh, Whitehurst off the mark on that one. They're talking to Barry Richards and the officials. Did they send him the, the wrong special team? Because Tommy Bowden just, uh, he just reacted, though, as if to say no. And now it looks as though they're going to go after a 53-yard field goal. Also could punt it. Yep. Well, ball is down, kicks on the way, and if he's got the distance, it's good. And he's wide to the right and no good. The youngster had the distance from the 50-plus, but was just off the mark to the right. So let's take a timeout. 12 minutes left until halftime. Still the Hurricanes with a seven-point margin. ESPN's College Football Saturday Primetime. Brought to you by Sprint. With Sprint, business is beautiful. And the 2005 Ford Mustang. Built for the road ahead. Well, a good look right there at the causeway and back into uh, Biscayne Bay. It rained off and on the last couple of days here, but it did not seem to dampen the spirit of either team. And uh, as we said, the Miami workouts have been uh, rather stringent this week because of that upset loss on the road last week at Chapel Hill. Tyrone Moss back at the ball game at tailback. And they'll give it to him. Left side turns it up. And he's going to have about three, maybe four yards on the play. Tonight at 9.45 at ESPN2, the Colorado State Rams look to upset Alex Smith and the undefeated Utah Utes. 19 days of primetime football on ESPN. ESPN2 and ABC continues with day 10 later tonight. Alex Smith, one of the best quarterbacks.
quarterbacks in the country, Utah on fire. Got to go to Wyoming next week. Laramie, Wyoming. Not an easy spot, place. is it? Yep. <laughs> Snow sideways there. Second down and seven for the Miami Hurricanes. Berlin with an audible. And again, he'll give it to Moss. Good defense against the run. Charles Bennett is the first man to get there to him. Here's the BCS standing brought to you by Allstate. And Utah sixth. Texas in trouble. Tennessee goes down today. And uh, unfortunately for the Vols, they lost Schaefer last week. Ainge goes down with an injury against Notre Dame. So those last two games yeah. against Bandit yeah. and Kentucky are not gimmies. Not gimmies. See the national championship numbers on the wall here at the Orange Bowl for the Hurricanes. Third down and four, and they need to take it out to the 46-yard line. Berlin got the pass complete, good for the first down, down at the 44-yard line, hitting Jalou. Hakeem Jalou, a sophomore out of New Orleans, 6'4", 188 pounds from St. Augustine High School. Wow. Couldn't have been delivered any more perfectly. No, Justin Miller's in pretty good shape, but Brock Berlin shows you the strength of his arm. And also the accuracy. I mean, it hit him right between the eight and the zero. From the 43, play action. Berlin gets this one out and threw it too tall to Parrish. And let's check back with uh, Reese Davis. What do you got for us? Ron Sylvester Crooms homecoming in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, had a 17-7 lead on Mississippi State at the half. Early in the third quarter, Omar Connor to a wide open T. Millen. We had Ramsey Robinson spinning like a top. Alabama's lead has been trimmed to three. Here comes Sly's dog. Sly's got his football team playing about as well as you can play. And things are getting tight in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, a, a, an upset win by Mississippi State there would really have the coffee cups rattling on Monday. Iowa State with a big win today. Berlin steps up, and again, this time he is just a little too tall for Roscoe Parrish. Well, a little, little too tall. Is <laughs> Roscoe's only about 5'8". So Brock Berlin, if you throw it up the ladder, he's going to need a uh, net to see his size. But he has speed. And well, you see the numbers, turnovers, Miami, one, comes in none. Total yards, 165 to 92. I know we'll get all the scores coming up at halftime. Did I read that right? Arizona, did they get their first conference win this afternoon? They were ahead the last time I looked. I think they got it. The guys will talk about that in a lot more at halftime. Blitz off the corner, and he just okay, throws this one away. The flag comes down. Did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. Tremaine Billy was the man coming on the blitz. John Lovett, the defensive coordinator. Attention of grounding. Number seven on the offense. The penalty is lost and down at the spot. Then now the Clemson defense, the run. Miami's going away from the run. Yep. And they've stopped the run. And now they have a plan against the pass. Miami, we talked about their first 11 plays being six runs, five passes. They're not doing that same thing now. They're throwing the ball more. Brian Monroe is on to kick the left footer, only the second time that he's had to punt tonight. And Justin Miller, the dangerous one, is back deep. And this kick is off the side of his foot, a fast-spinning spiral. And Miller for the 15 is going to give it a try. And the flag comes down, and it uh, looks as though Clemson is going to take over this drive deep in their own territory. Until Roll was down to make the tackle. So the penalty will be stepped off against the Tigers. We're going to take a timeout. 9.38 left until halftime, and we remain 10-3 Kings. We are back 10-3 to the score. You're looking at uh, David Whitehurst, uh, Charlie Whitehurst's uh, dad. And, of course, he played with the Green Bay Packers. In fact, for more on that, here's Aaron Andrews. Well, Ron, Charlie says this is really the first year that he's really relied on his dad for some advice and support. The best piece of advice David Whitehurst has given his son is stick with it, no matter how tough it gets. Charlie says his dad has told him tons of stories, how he would have 6,000 people in the stands cheering for him one minute, and then the next minute booing him. Charlie, just stick with it, his dad says. Guys? Okay.
there, and you know that really goes with that position. You got to learn to take the cheers. You got to learn to take the boos because you get too much credit when they win, and then you get too much blame when you lose. Here are his stats, Mike. His completion percentage, you know, not as high as it has been this year, but 38 touchdowns. But also, in looking up, Mike, because of all the changes with the offensive line, 17 times he's been sacked this year. That's not inordinately high, but he's had to throw the ball away 30 times this year. That could be the difference between 50% and 60% completion. New receivers, new offensive line. This time, Charlie will go from the high formation, and they go with the running play, and that's Merriweather, and he's going to be close to the first down. It'll be third down and short. DeVaris Gooden is there to make the tackle. David Whitehurst, uh, you talked about it, Green Bay Packers, also a quarterback for Furman. The guy behind him just found out he's on TV. But, uh, you know, when you play the quarterback position, you can help your son out a little bit because of what you went through. Yeah. So here we go with the third down and one. Eight minutes, 20 seconds left until halftime. Clemson trying to hold on to the football, get it in the end zone, and going at halftime tied at 10. Give it to Merriweather, the fullback blocking, turns it up the sideline, and he's not only going to have the first down, he's going to have about 25 yards more than that. Reggie Merriweather. We talked about the poor tackling the last four weeks. The arm tackles, and Merriweather runs through about three missed tackles. Leading rusher on this football team. Reggie Merriweather, 377 yards rushing, coming into tonight. So they got a first down, and it's a Yusuf Kelly who will check into the lineup, as we mentioned. Uh, he weighs 234 pounds, and a much more style of runner by T. McClendon at uh, North Carolina State. And they give it to him. He tries it right up the middle and bounces off one, but will not bounce off the second. Got to be a gain of two, and McIntosh is the guy who collared it. Michael Kane, the offensive coordinator, talked about Yusef Kelly this week on the phone. He said he bench presses over 400 pounds. He's a 4-4-40 guy. We like him in this football game for tough yards. Now, those were tough yards. There's Michael Kane. Former head coach at NC State. That's right. Very nice man and very good football coach. Second down and eight. Well, that run by Merriweather a moment ago really got them into very good field position. Play calls become different and easier. Pass almost picked off McIntosh. Whoa. I mean, he was dreaming of six right there, and he would have been doing more than dreaming had he come down with the football. Ron, he read the eyes of Whitehurst. Number 50, he drops back in coverage. He knows the football is being delivered. McIntosh had a pick. You know, I'm not so sure if Antron, uh, Antron Roll, if he had stayed back a little bit, I think, he, I think he caught him in his peripheral vision and then dropped the football. Third down and eight. We need to go to the 47-yard line. Whitehurst over the middle. This one is picked off at the 37-yard line by guess who? Devin Hester. We talked about the fact that he has become a superior return man, but also Randy Shannon said, hey, don't forget his athletic ability and his defensive ability. He's getting better. Big play guy. Charlie Whitehurst throws his football behind. The intended receiver, Hester, is right there on Bayham. Yep, he sure did, Mike. You're exactly right. And Bayham tries to turn around to get a hand on it. And if he had been able to, he could have played defensive back. Clemson's going to have to hurry. They're late getting the defense on the field. And Miami already has lined up. Frank Gore, right side. Blasted hard at the line of scrimmage. A gain of about one by Anthony Waters. Also Eric Coleman. We talked about Devin Hester. He's been on the field 29 plays on defense, special teams, and offense. 
Talk about a guy that can make a difference in a football game. And even in the kicking game, when you don't kick to him, you still kick it, give up yards. Not to have to kick it to number four, Hester. Well, you know, the same thing happened in the NC State game, and we talked about that. But just because of his influence, even if he's not doing it with the return, he's doing it psychologically to the other special team. Berlin's going to run this one and step out of bounds, and he got hit out of bounds, and here comes one, two, three, four flags in. Charles Bennett is the man who's going to pick up the personal foul. Yeah, good call. Char uh, Charles Bennett hit Berlin as Berlin was coming out of, out of bounds. Well, and that's a hard situation because a, a charging oh, no. defensive end, he's not looking that closely at the line. He just sees white or sees orange, as I should say, and just wanted to get to the quarterback. But as you can see, he was a couple of steps out, and it's going to cost him 15. It's a big series for this defense of Clemson because they played well and they have control over Miami's offense. Now to create this big penalty, give Miami good field position, a mistake. Well, after that play right there, Clemson's defense has already been on the field. 33 plays, and we still have 6-16 left to play in the second quarter. That's Leggett in motion. If they pitch it back to Gore and looking for a spot to run, and he just keeps fighting his way, weaving his way down around the 30-yard line. And at Quadrant Hill, again with a good block. Number 23 had a lead block that paved the way on the touchdown run back in the opening quarter, and he got a good one at that time. They're going to place it at the 30. It'll be second down and one, so maybe a down to play with if you are at Miami. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, rush yardage, you see the last three games, Clemson's defense really toughened up against the run. So here they come, and let's see what they come up with. Miami, 60 rushing yards in the ball game. Play action. They rolled it out, or take it, the tight end. He was there blocking, then he got the pass, and he's going to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Still plenty of time at the 5.23 mark, but Justin Miller made the tackle. And, Mike, I would suggest to you a touchdown right here would be huge as far as Miami's concerned. This is big by Brock Berlin because he's going to his left. He shovels the ball out there to Ortega, who blocked and then shot to the flat. Open, wide open. You talked about a play to, to really try to do someone second and one. That was a good call. Berlin, 10 of 17, 116 yards. Ortega, out of right here in Miami, played at Gulliver Prep. And it's Gore. High stepping his way just inside the 20. Groover on the stop. Let's take a look at some of the things that Brock Berlin has done here tonight. He's been on fire the last four games. Good post route to Frank Gore. There's a good route to Roscoe Parrish. And out of the backfield, and he hits Parrish. That's that, his was, that was his best throw. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, like, like I said, when it happened, they hit him right Jala. between the eight and the zero. And Jala had just made the turn. That's the way the play is designed. Nice job at the defensive end, Ortega was there to make the catch. That's going to be a loss as Bobby Williamson is there to uh, to make a tackle. Bobby was a tight end, and in fact, he scored a touchdown and had a sack in that game against Utah State. That was the ball game that Clemson came up with, 11 sacks of the quarterback. Well, you look at last year when Clemson, as the season went on, they got hot toward yeah. the end, and we saw them against Tennessee. Woo. They and Tennessee. played in, in Peach Bowl. Tennessee was sorry that they saw them. I'm telling you, they lit them up down there in Atlanta. Well, in the red zone, this is what Brock Berlin has done. Eight touchdowns, no interceptions. Pressure. Got the screen, and Quadrant Hill tripped over his own line, but I think that's Chris Myers who was uh, posting up to block, and all of a sudden, uh, Chris got knocked down, and then he fell over it. And Gaines Adams, number 93, was in there. I really jammed up the blockers good series they were not sure if he was going to be able to play tonight because of an injured knee Gaines Adams John Petty here comes the attempt to get a place this ball down at the 29 yard line so the 39 yard attempt boy he yanked it to the left it's going to be wide left and no good okay you let Clemson
messing around here, play around here. They had good field position, didn't take advantage of it. Uh, looks like a little of the edge has come off Miami's play. We'll see. Hi, now. Well, welcome back tonight to Applack Trivia Question. Who was the last Clemson player selected in the first round of the NFL Draft? That answer coming up later. Last Clemson player I don't taken know. in the first round. When I think Clemson, I think of uh, Frank Howard, you know, the grand old guy that uh, did such a great job coaching at Clemson. And, uh, the man who had the rock uh, and started a great tradition. Great guy. First down, they roll the pocket to the right, and that pass is completed. And stepping out of bounds immediately is Aries Curry. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Aaron Andrews coming to you from Miami, Florida, 10 to nothing. The Hurricanes jumped out on top. The Clemson came back with an answer, 48-yard field goal by the part of Dean. Then they had another opportunity and were wide right on a 54-yarder, and that's how we stand. left until halftime. Well, they give this one to Coleman, and that's a good job of an open field tackle by Thomas Carroll. A sure stop there. But, Mike, just what I said before we went to the break, I still, I see a little bit of the edge coming off both offensively and defensively of the game of the Miami Hurricanes compared to what they started with tonight. Yeah, they took the best shot. Clemson took yeah. Miami's first hit and they survived. Now, if they don't make any mistakes here, win one, a touchdown behind or get a score here, and they're, they're going to play in the second half. This is going to be a great game. Hands it to Coleman. Not going to have the first down. It's a good open field stop by John Beeson. John getting a start tonight, only a red shirt freshman. One of the seven changes made by Randy Shannon on the defense tonight. Well, you watch the defensive line of Miami. They get right up in the line of scrimmage, control the line of scrimmage, take on blocks so that all of a sudden their linebackers and secondary great three can make the play. He'll get a good grade on that one because the fullback Jackson was coming pell-mell. He took him on and was there to make the tackle, his third. So here is Hester. Don't make a mistake here. Kick to him. I'd rather kick it out of bounds. Put a little pressure on him, and this is an end-over-end -end kick. And Clemson's all over the place to cover this one, and they touch it dead. A very short kick, only 36 yards. Well, the answer to tonight's Athletic Trivia question, who was the last Clemson player selected in the first round of the NFL draft? Rod Gardner, wide receiver, 2001. 15th overall by the Washington Redskins. Well, we have Todd McShea up here. He knows all about that draft. And uh, I'm sure he knew it Rod Gardner. Clemson has had some receivers, skill players. It also, out of there. I remember a group of linebackers that oh, came out also yeah. in the late 80s and the early 90s. They've had some French Garris too, right? Yep. So on first down, middle screen, this is Gore, gets by the first wave, 45, boy, that is a nice move to pick up the first down, and almost a gain of 15. Reese Davis, let's check back with you, what's going on now, partner? All right, Ron, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, a lot of high performers here, Kirk, Trev, Mark, and Chris all here, we'll talk about many things, including how the Vols lost more than a football game against Notre Dame this afternoon, a college station classic, and also the Axe is back. How far can Wisconsin take it? Back to our game, Gore. 10 yards, 15, counted off at 18. He's all the way down to the 37, and right now, Clemson has got to close the door because they cannot allow a hurricane touchdown right here, already down by 10 to 3. And Miami has all three timeouts left. So a lot of time for the Canes offense. Clock runs at 113. Berlin steps up. That pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. Eric Coleman got one hand on it. That's all right, Eric. You knocked it down. I'm not sure you would have caught it with both hands for that matter. He's a big, good-looking kid, though, at 6'5", 290 pounds. 
he started had that tight end run. Well, you offensive know, lineman and that's right. Then he had a defensive lineman had a sack and scored a touchdown in that uh, NC State game, and uh, they think he's going to become an extremely good football player. Gore now 11 carries, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Hill into block pass, a little too far. Roscoe Parrish. But they brought the pressure. CJ Gaddis had the cover, excuse me. Yeah, they got Gaddis in man coverage against Roscoe Parrish. Gaddis was up for the challenge. He was a quarterback that switched the corner when he knew he wasn't going to be a quarterback playing. He made the switch. Pretty good coverage. So that stops the clock, 104. It is third down. Third down to 10. They made the take it to the 28 and a half yard line. You look at the numbers on Brock Berlin on the season. And they'll go with the draw play. Hill. Hill breaks off a tackle. Second effort. He's going to have the first down. Put an asterisk by that one. Corey Groover is there to make the tackle, but now a new set of downs and still 56 seconds on the clock and all their timeouts and the officials will stop the clock and they, I think they're going to measure, but it certainly appears from where they spotted the ball that he is going to have the first down. Injury for Clemson. Groover is the man who was shaken up. always wondered and I, I I didn't have a chance to ask Corey but how you wind up as a defensive tackle wearing a single digit number you don't see that real often no you don't <laughs> <laughs> boy we're getting to the bag of tricks yeah. for that one <laughs> I think in number seven I'm trying to think of football but I think right away of Mickey Man on baseball now that dates me but Mickey Man on Number seven. While you're thinking of it, the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is coming up next. 56 ticks left on the clock. Just came to me. John Elway. Well, I was going to say, how long did it take well, you to come hey, up with I, Elway? I was thinking about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Clock is running. 49 seconds down to 48. Blitz coming right up the middle. They pick it up nicely. Far sideline. Boy, he had legged open, and he underthrew this one. The offensive line of Miami really picked up the blitz mm -hmm. and gave Brock Berlin a chance to get the ball to leg it. Now, wet ball may have got away from me yeah. there. Yeah. I tell you, Leggett is such a great-looking target because he's 6'4", still a string bean. He'll gain a lot of weight. He only weighs 177 and has tremendous speed. Second down and 10. You see the blitz coming off the corner. He'll pick that one up, and the pass thrown in and out of the hands, or did he hold on? That's Jala. I think they're going to give him the catch. Yep, I think he juggled it and it came back down in his arms. So Akeem Jala comes up with a big reception here. Watch this play. Yep, it comes right back down. And he puts it in his chest. First and 10 Miami from the 14. Running play, Frank Gore tries to get to the outside, cuts it back up the middle, and he will score. There's a flag down. It is away from the play at the five-yard line. The result on the field is a touchdown. Jenkins. Yep, Darnell Jenkins with the uh, the personal foul. So the score goes on the board. Gore, that's two nice runs he's had, but this one here, the cutback, and he had everybody going over pursuing on the play. All and of a when sudden. you have three timeouts left, you can run the draw, and you can stop the clock if he gets stopped. Frank Gore gets stopped. So 
That's a great but, point, Mike. But, but that's the offense. Clemson's offense didn't do their job to milk the clock and not let any time on for Miami's offense. Yep, you are exactly right. John Petty to attempt the extra point. And he knocks it right down the middle. So let's take a timeout. 19 seconds until intermission. And our new score, Hurricane 17 at the Tigers 3. So we are back, and the rain now coming down steadily. And a 15-yard penalty assessed here on the kickoff. So it means that uh, they will be booting the ball from the 20-yard line. And some of the Hardy fans who are sticking around here, others have gone for uh, hot chocolate and cocoa during the halftime or maybe headed to the parking lot. It's getting pretty damp. Here's the kick. Mark Chent will kick this one off, and it'll be returned from the 13. And it's Miller. Miller loose. 45 at the 50. And what an open field tackle. At the 50-yard line, a return of 37 yards, and it was Sonoris Moss who stayed at home to make the tackle. Here's that catch. Jawa makes the catch and sets up the touchdown run. Kevin Everett, the tight end, gets a great block here. Here's what's talked about getting two blocks on one time. The offensive tackle, tight end Everett, then goes off to the linebacker and opens it up for Frank Gore. Here's where you got to be thinking of it. Charlie Whitehurst, at least get three. You got 11 seconds. Got the full complement of timeouts. You need one throw or two throws here to get in field goal range. Sets to throw. Drills it. Got a man wide open. Stepping out of bounds at the 32 is Bayham. Now you got to kick the field goal. Four seconds. That's a good throw by Charlie Whitehurst. Good call by Michael O'Kane. Clear out. Let Bam come underneath, set up the field goal. So Jad Dean, who already has a kick of 48 yards, comes out, and we'll see if that personal foul called against Darnell Jenkins on the touchdown play, if it uh, winds up costing the Hurricanes points. From the 37, a 47-yard attempt, and it is raining hard again. Here's the kick, plenty of distance, and wide right, no good. So we are at halftime. And the Miami Hurricanes score on their last offensive possession to go on top by two touchdowns, 17 to three. Take another look at this field goal attempt. Well, this kid's got quite a leg. No problem, but it is wide to the right. And let's go back to the studio. 17 to three, your halftime score. Now here's Reese Davis. Pontiac, high performance, halftime report. Reese? All right, Ron. Tough first half, Clemson unable to capitalize on a couple of opportunities, 17-3, Hurricanes with the lead. Everybody in the house, with the exception of Lee Corso, a little bit under the weather, hopefully he gets the feeling better. We continue on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. We'll tell you what to take exactly from Oklahoma's close call against Texas A&M. Jason White able to make some plays. We'll see what it might do to his Heisman candidacy as he tries to repeat. Also, unveil exactly what happened on Rocky Top and how the game might have been secondary. Back on the Pontiac, high performance halftime report. Miami on top of Clemson, 17 to three at the break. Frank Gore making the nice turn going in for the Hurricanes. Number 10 Miami bouncing back nicely after the fall at North Carolina last week. Reese Davis on Kirk Herb Street. Trev Alberts, Mark May, Chris Fowler. That's, that takes up half the halftime. They're teaching him the, nah, teaching him the head nod. The head nod right nod. there. Right there. Yeah, he's yeah, he's do a little analysis, That's too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma down on the road in College Station. Most believed it was the last hurdle that the Sooners would have to clear before they could make their way into the FedEx Orange Bowl in the national championship game. Of course, the Aggies still smarting not only from last week and the loss in Floyd Casey Stadium to Baylor with that 77-0 beatdown they got at the hands of the Sooners last year. And Franchoni was not going to play it close to the vest. Jacob Young to Irvin Taylor. Irvin's got prospects. Irvin's bona fide. What about Fran, the fake punt for the touchdown? Put A&M up 28-14, still in the first half of this game. Over 600 yards of offense in the first half, and now 
28-28. Jason White finding Bubba Moses for the touchdown, and OU had its first lead of the day. But Fram wasn't through with the tricks. Chad Schroeder to Joey Thomas here, Chris. Great job of just playing to win and coaching to win. Down seven at that point. They go for it, ties the game up, and Coach Stoops is not a happy man. Once a piece. A couple of times. Burns on those types of plays. In a 35-all game, here is a Pontiac game-changing nominee, and it is the Heisman Trophy winner. Jason White to Martin Bradley. Five touchdown passes on the day. Reggie McNeil left this game with an injury. Ty Branion, a former walk-on, trying to write his name, and Aggie Roar and Schroeder threw the touchdown pass and caught a touchdown pass earlier. Nearly grabbed that one that potentially could have tied the game. But Oklahoma able to survive and advance. 42 to 35 over Texas A&M. So now the Sooner defense in its last two wins, I think Chris, they deserve a lot of credit for going into hostile environments against teams revved up to beat them. But Sooner defense has given up 70 in the last two weeks. What, what do we learn from this about I know the schedule's not tough, but about the national championship prospect. We learned there could be trouble if they face USC in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Yeah. Between now and then, I'm not sure they're going to face a team that's going to exploit them. But you got to give the Sooners credit. I mean, no one's calling this year's team one of the great teams of all time. That label was uh, handed out last year before they stumbled. But you, know, you said it. On the road, last two weeks, ranked opponent, quality opponent, inspired opponent, who had a chance to win the game or tie the game, force overtime on the last play, field goal, Hail Mary, couldn't quite get it done. You know, when I watch their defense, guys, it goes back to when I was a young player at Nebraska. I remember as a freshman, a lot of times I'd be out there, and it just I understood that I was thinking. I wasn't reacting, and I, and I was always a step slow. And when I watch their defense a lot, I think they're thinking. They're not reacting in the game. I think it's the whole story for them. A lot of people will say, that, well, Reggie McNeil's a mobile guy, and when he gets outside, well, Ty Brunion comes in to walk on. He's 7 of 12. It's not just the mobile quarterbacks, Kirk. I think part of it is that defense. They're, think, they're, not, you know, they're, not, they're thinking out there. They're not reacting, so cut it back. You got Nebraska and Baylor, a great opportunity. So you're fine there. To, you're fine there, but you got to get down the road. <laughs> well, not necessarily. You know, Baylor can throw the ball. I guess so, but I, I agree with you. But I also think they're just average. I, I think the corners on Oklahoma are average players. They need Antonio Perkins to come back in the, in the worst way. The thing that stood out to me about this football game is to have Jason White under center. The leadership being down 21 to 7, being down 28 to 14. The hostile crowd, the crowd's ready to just explode and take the game over. Jason White comes out time after time and made big plays. And the other thing, Mark Bradley along with Mark Clayton. That's the difference with Oklahoma's offense this year. What hurt them against Kansas State and LSU last year was Clayton was their only playmaker on the outside and teams would take him out. Now with Bradley and Travis Wilson, they've got a lot more weapons. I think Bob Stoops has a lot of things to worry about. Not only his defensive secondary, but how about his special teams giving up those two big plays? And I think if you look at the big picture here, looking down the road, coaches don't want to look to the FedEx Orange Bowl, but I will because I'm not a coach. <laughs> if USC continues to go undefeated along with Oklahoma, that should be the matchup. I think right now, if you look at both of these teams, particularly the Oklahoma defense against the USC offense, I think it's a mismatch. How are they going to cover Dwayne Jarrett? How are they going to cover Reggie Bush? How are they going to get, get around and get to Matt Leinart with no pass rush. I think if you look at this game, it may not be close. We may be looking at a blowout. Well, I want to see what the Plenty pollsters, though, do. What the pollsters do with Oklahoma as compared to Auburn, if Auburn is oh, yeah. able to continue oh, to run the table, too. So we'll see. And, you know, Adrian Peterson in this game left the game with an apparent arm injury for a while. He did go over 100 yards, and he did come back late in that game to help Oklahoma run out the clock or try to run out the clock before the last heat by Ty Branion into the end zone. Another game in the Big 12, Oklahoma State and Texas. You know, for a while, I thought that the state of Texas was going to try to close the bridge and boat traffic across the Red River, make that thing deeper, quit letting those folks from Oklahoma come down there and embarrass them because Les Miles' team had a 35-14 lead at one point. The Texas has rallied now, still in the third quarter, 35-28. to The Horns have their hands full with the post. Back with more, including Notre Dame, Tennessee. After this. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac and the first ever G6, the next official performance machine of the NCAA. A smorgasbord, plethora of football, 19 days of it, in fact, on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC, included Oregon and Cal. Jeff Tedford Cal had lost seven straight to Oregon. Tempered from Oregon assistant. Here's a Pontiac game-changing nominee when Aaron Rodgers hit hey, Jack. Back off, MacArthur. MacArthur. Was that a cheerleader or a student section? Tough guy out there without pads, huh? MacArthur was second TD catch of the day. Here's Kellen oh, yeah. to a oh, wide yeah. open Keith Allen. That was on fourth and ten. Oregon had an opportunity to win the game, and Allen just could not corral it. And Tedford and Cal, who gave up a 
lead in the fourth quarter last year to the Ducks. This time they hang on 28 to 27, though Oregon gave them a tough fight. Notre Dame and Tennessee. Tennessee, the ball 7-3 against Tyrone Willingham's team and Eric Ainge. Oh, they've got it set up for Cedric Houston. Cedric's going to do the rest, knifing through the Irish defense. <laughs> 56 yards, he takes it to the house, into the checkerboard. Volunteers take the lead. Third quarter, Eric Ains got hurt late in the first half, so Rick Lawson had to come in and play. That's, well, that's just flat ill-advised, what that is. Great hands by Mike Goolsby, though, Reese. Come on, give the linebacker a little love. That's huh? funny, that game-changing performance. The ball is kind of landing his stomach. It's still, it's not point. easy for us. 14 to 10 at that point, 17 to 13. Notre Dame goes on Rocky Top and beats the team that almost certainly, even with Eric Ainge's injury, probably is still going to win the SEC East games with Kentucky and Vanderbilt left. And Wisconsin gets the ax back from Minnesota, 38 to 14. John Stocko providing some serious offense. Career day, almost 300 yards passing, Chris. And now the Badgers just two wins away from finishing off a perfect season. And, you know, you have to start wondering about the process, prospects, maybe, of Minnesota running the table where they might fit in in the polls at the end. Well, Wisconsin, I think, you know, they're catching teams at the right time. Minnesota clearly on a slide. they got Michigan State. We're going to have to see if the Spartans have anything left after a couple of heartbreaking losses. But you talked about John Stocko almost having 300 yards. The defense has been great week in, week out. But the emergence of Stocko, we snicker at a team that has one pass play of 20 yards or longer per game. They had eight all season. But now, a little explosiveness there. I think that I feel a lot better if I was Wisconsin about going on the road winning the last two. Absolutely. And I think it's all from Barry Alvarez, their head coach. With that bye week, what they did is they worked on some things offensively, throwing the ball vertically, moving the ball through the air rather than through the ground, becoming multidimensional offensively. Now teams that face them have to stop two things. Not only the run by Anthony Davis, but also the pass by John Stocko. Can I talk about Notre Dame? Sure. sure. I mean, right, hold on. Right. Talk about Notre Dame. How about Ty Willingham and his team going down there, there now 6-3, and three, going down to Tennessee? This is a team that's going to win the SEC East or was in the driver's seat to win the SEC East. Team that was 5-7 and seven last year. The development that they've made with this team, a lot of people talking about, oh, is Ty Willingham necessarily the right guy there? Look, all you're looking for is progress. You go 5-7, and seven, you're now 6-3, and three, you're at Pittsburgh. You know, Mark, they're going to beat Pittsburgh on the road. And then you <laughs> finish USC. 7-4, nice year, progress you for this team. You get a team. third team quarter against them they're going to win some games oh. <laughs> let's talk about Tennessee because Tennessee I think is a team now after losing their two top quarterbacks down the road this is a team to keep an eye on they have Kentucky and they have Vanderbilt Georgia's sitting there hoping Kentucky or Vanderbilt can pull off the upset because then the Bulldogs of course could control their own destiny I think all of us are kind of assuming Tennessee's going to be the team in Atlanta in the SEC championship game but with these injuries to the quarterbacks Georgia, I think all of a sudden the doors opened up a little bit. But, but just a little but bit. Yeah, Kentucky, Vanderbilt plays I, Vanderbilt, <laughs> Vanderbilt will play hard. I think Kentucky, Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky's giving up the go. <laughs> they, 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 they are they absolutely. They can punt on first down and beat Kentucky. Hey, let's update what's Vanderbilt. going on with Maybe Texas. Vanderbilt. You know, sometimes some have questioned whether the Longhorns have the heart. Longhorns on a roll and coming back. Raymond Taylor on a little reverse, and he's got nothing. Greengrass, an opportunity in front of him, and he takes it in, and Texas has come all the way back down 35-14. They've got it tied at 35. We're not yet through the third quarter. You know, Texas is the only Big 12 team that Les Miles has not beaten since he's been the head coach at Oklahoma State. Looks as if he was well on his way to doing so, but all of a sudden it's locked up at 35. Hurricanes up by a couple of touchdowns on the Tigers at the break. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac. Vote for this week's Pontiac Game Changing Performance at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. Just about 15 minutes or so away from Colorado State and Utah over on ESPN2, Alex Smith of the Utes, the guy that among the quarterback candidates for the Heisman Trophy, Trev says has separated himself statistically. Utes and Rams coming up about 15 minutes on ESPN2. Hot. said at halftime that last little spurt by the Hurricanes, they went in with the momentum at halftime. They, they did, and I think it's imperative that Clemson take this opening kickoff and go down and get points. they got to get a touchdown to stay in this football game because Miami's got the momentum, as you said. Brock Berlin's hitting on all cylinders. Uh, Gore ran the ball well in the second uh, quarter. And you look at these stats, here's the one thing. Figure all those yards you give, you gave up, uh, if you're Miami's defense, 
and you've only given up 41 yards rushing to Clemson. Here's the other stat right here, two for eight. If you're going to pull the upset, you've got to stay on the field. Well, we'll see what they got in mind as you look at third down conversions as well. Neither team great there, three of eight and two of eight. Miller, number nine, and Aries Curry, number one. And they stand in the nine formation trying to figure out which direction the kick is going to come. And it's going to go to Miller at the goal line. 15, 20. Still on his feet and now bumps hard out of bounds at around the 31-yard line. And look who knocked him out of bounds. It was Devin Hester. Let's check on the sideline with Aaron Andrews. Aaron. Well, Ron, Clemson head coach Tommy Bowden yelling at his team in the tunnel, you need to come out with some fire. He told me his biggest complaint from that first half is the tackling. He said it was very, very poor. He said Miami is challenging us and we're not accepting it. I asked him about adjustments for his offense. He said we need to find a way to run the ball. Ron? Okay, you know, Aaron, and he's he's being true to what he said from the get-go this week. He said we're not very good statistically at running the football, but yet we've got to make it happen if we're going to have a chance to win. Whitehurst had his people covered, and then that gets that one off. That's Chauncey Stuckey, the first time that we've seen him tonight. He is a speedster who is not 100%, has had some problems with injuries of late. No, I, I echo what Aaron's talking about because this drive right here will set the tone for this football game. Yeah. Tommy Bowden knows this is an important drive, as important as any in this football game. Showing him that decent field position. With a second down at about five and a half. And they scrimmage from just across their own 35-yard line. And they go with Merriweather. Merriweather off the left side is going to be harnessed before he gets the first down. Tavares Gooden with still another stop. And Tavares only a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. He has played well tonight. Now we go to third down, where Clemson has not been very good. Two of eight on third down conversions so far. Whitehurst looks to the sideline, gets his signal of what play they want him to call. Third down, and having to take it to the 41, they need about two, two and a half yards. Sticky in motion as they roll the pocket and lobs this one, just going to throw it away. And I go back to the point that Mike made in the first half. The, the further you run getting toward that sideline, it becomes a 12th defender, a 13th defender. It's just the odds of you making a completion are really, really rare. I think that's the third time they've rolled the pocket and they've come up empty. Miami's got too much speed to let you outside. Cole Chasen, the sophomore out of Roswell, Georgia, back to kick. Devin Hester is the deep man. We mentioned in the first half, he is prepared to soccer-style kick it if need be, but they've been coming after him, so forcing him to kick it away. Here's Hester from the 17. Tries to reverse it, goes back into the sideline, comes and stayed at home, and does a nice job of stopping him short of the 25. 44 on the kick and five on the return. Tonight's game track is brought to you by Pioneer. Opening touchdown, opening series. Frank Gore. Here is a new personal best. Uh, actually, that miss right there by Dean, uh, the one from 53 yards. And that's how we stand, 17-3, to as Miami came up with the last possession touchdown of the first half. Quadrant Hill back in the ball game at fullback. And he'll give it to Gore. Hill is blocking, breaks it right up the middle. Has five, has ten. Cut it off at about 16 yards as they will take him out to the 37-yard line. Ty Hill finally saved what might have been a touchdown run. Good job of blocking by that offensive front. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Dan Warner said the emphasis is on the running game this week. Frank Gore, you see the hole. Offensive line with a good blocks. Up front, Frank Gore having a great game. Yep, he really is. 99 yards at this juncture, Mike. An average of almost eight yards per carry, and he has two touchdowns. He gets it again. Takes this one back up inside. Puts a head down at his split, but he'll have 100 yards after that carry, and it was Waters who made the tackle on him. 
Clemson needs to stop this drive because if uh, Miami goes down, a dagger in the heart. Gore, an interesting story. Two season ending knee injuries. And he still, he works very, very hard and has gotten himself back in great playing condition. They initially shot for 20 carries a game, and now it's more than that as he is hit on this play and knocked down by Anthony Waters. That's a good individual stop. And now it's going to be a third down for the Hurricanes, and they lost about a half yard on that play. They've got to take it out to the 47 and a half yard line, and as you can see, Gore comes out, and they'll insert Roscoe Parrish into the lineup. Remember, Roscoe Parrish is the guy that Brock Berlin likes to deliver the ball to. Officials uh, were looking at the band, so they may be going over to tell the coaches. About the band. Tuba section. Well, we're pointing at uh, somebody up there in the area around the band. Larry Coker with a wry grin on his face. He got a kick out of whatever they were telling him. Going to silence the band. See, they don't have time to play right. They're ringing out their clothes right <laughs> now. It's been so wet. <laughs> I don't know what they could have done. We'll get a clarification. I think on it. they were playing when Miami was calling the signals. Stack set to the near side. Berlin under pressure, and they get to him. He is sacked the ball. And that is Pinnock. The ball came loose. But it will stay in the possession of Miami, and it's going to be fourth down. So a good sequence by the Tiger defense to open the second half. They just need the offense to do their part. Charles Bennett with the first hit. Good coverage. Third time that they have punted tonight. This is Brian Monroe. Youngster who came up as a soccer style place kicker and then learned how to uh, to punt by going to a Ray Guy camp. Not one of his uh, better efforts right there. Very high and not returnable. Buck Ortega will touch it dead. And that punt right there is good for 44 yards. So we are back 17 to 3, Miami on top. And we now have uh, settled Bandgate. And undoubtedly it was not the band, but. The players were hearing whistles, and we'll we'll talk more about it after this first play right here, the first and ten by the Clemson Tigers. Straight ahead with this running play, and it's not going to go for very much. Aaron Andrews, let's check with you. What well, happened down there? Like you mentioned, the players were hearing whistles. They looked at the officials waiting for a call. The officials said, hey, it didn't come from us. They pointed over to the Clemson band, said, stop blowing your whistles. Clemson band director pointed over to the fans and said, it wasn't us, it was these fans. So try to see if anything else happens, Ron. <laughs> well, I, I believe the band director. I don't think that he would, with malice and forethought, lie here on national television. I think it was the other fans. Don't know who they were representing, but anyway, players were confused and they got it squared away. Whitehurst going on top. Going to go long into double coverage and the ball's knocked away. And it's Kelly Jennings who was back there to knock it away from Aries Curry. The Air, intended receiver. Aries Curry, the speedster, and Miami's got the right call on Randy Shannon with double coverage against Curry. Kelly Jennings, pretty good shape. I'm going to tell you, Mike, this has been fun tonight, watching speed against speed on the outside. Both of these teams. Hey, wide receivers. Yeah, we're really blessed with uh, just exceptional speed. Right now it's third down, third and seven, and the Clemson wants to hold on to the football. They've got to take it to the 34-yard line. They're down by 14 points. Whitehurst stands tall, throws the pass right there, and got it complete, and that's Kelvin Grant. His 23rd reception on the year, good for 13 yards, and Jennings again with the tackle. Yeah, Whitehurst stood in there. Uh, 
delivered to football on time.